Welcome guys, I'm just doing a bit of ranked today. I'm trying out a mono green deck. I've just uh, thrown together. So we're using Kadama of the West Tree and uh, lots of ways to put tokens on creatures. Got a bit of a slow start here. We might get run over by this uh, enchantments deck. So that's five damage. So our bushwhack here, we could sort of we could just trade off with the visitor, and then we've got a follow-up Kadama, I suppose, to replace it. Or we could Doomscar Warrior and uh, swing in with a four-four. I feel like that might be the better move. Probably doesn't want to give me a forest. Oh, no, I'm going to get a forest. Okay. Oh, interesting. What was... I forgot what that... Uh, sure, let's... Uh, what should we, which one do we get? Let's get Smulacrum. Uh, that's that was the the um, Doomscar Warrior trigger. I completely forgot what this card did. <laughs> I was surprised that I got two triggers. All right. Oh yeah, that's the thing. We can no longer trade off with that. But of course. Token that's a copy of a non-legendary enchantment. Usually they seem to copy audacity. So Yeah. And this is the other main card I've got in the deck, Tribute to the World Tree. So you might call it a three mana do nothing card, which have anything anything that just has a trigger on it, that's what people usually that's usually how they describe it. But it's um uh, it means your smaller creatures get bigger when they get played, or when the larger creatures draw you a card. So it's pretty good going. Uh, now, just just thinking, is there anything we can salvage from this situation? Are we just dead on board here? Because we'll need a few tokens just to... Um, Tell you what, we'll similar crumb. Put some tokens on that guy. Uh swing it swing in with this guy. Sure. 
Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? So, I mean, that's a lot. That's three toughness, to be fair. That's a way to take three less damage. I just don't really have enough toughness on board here. Uh, this thing is adding more power and toughness to the board. So, you fight that one. You'll draw a card off that, of course. We're facing 11 power, at least. He's got removal as well. I lose four toughness off the board. Of course, probably taking out the naturalist would have been better because he was obviously able to do a lot more that turn because of the cost reduction. Uh, now, this guy does not have trample. So. So Millicron can block there, and then the guy with three toughness can block there. And technically, you know, we get to live for another turn. So I can play uh, Anissa here. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Well, isn't that interesting? So, uh, I can kill the naturalist. Um, I've only got eight mana. And I can only... S yeah. Okay, whatever. We'll... Uh, this is the last thing we can do. Okay, good game. So yeah, the enchantments deck is quite explosive. If you're not playing a, a heavy creature removal deck, that can just run you over like that. And we had, uh, that's right, we had quite a slow start. Um, I had no two drop or, I had no one drop or two drop. So yeah, this is uh, a, a much better opener. We're getting to go first as well. Beast Cooler into Kadama. He just needs a burn spell here. Oh, but he's going to copy me. Puts us ahead. Maybe we can defile her of vigor next turn. for nothing. So this is what our explosive start looks like. Ok, 
Okay. And sack Hajar, I think, to give that indestructible. Oh no, legendary creatures. Only works with legendary creatures. And then he put. I forgot about um, the fact that he just puts all the tokens on another creature. But there you go. In fact, guess what I can do? I'm going to do the same again. This time I'm going to trade off with that Beast Caller. I'll put all my tokens on the Defiler. I'll target any number of creatures. Oh, that's interesting. I'm pretty confident. That's going to be better. Because red-green usually just has to do damage to kill something. So I was thinking 11 toughness is going to be very tough for him to um, cope with. Yeah. This hand is not so good. You don't really want to see two evolving adaptives with no follow-up creature. There's a follow-up creature. That's very good, actually. Uh, let's attack. Now, controversially, I think I might... No, I think I'll hold the bushwhack. I was just thinking I could I could just find a forest with it. But uh, if all goes well... well he's, okay, he's playing control, so this is probably getting countered. I'm going to go ahead and play it anyway. We'll see. Okay, March of Otherworldly Light in order to stop me ramping out two forests. That's, that, was, that worked pretty well, so you're going to have to get rid of that. So, yeah, that's a heavy duty creature removal spell. That's uh, board sweeper. Uh, right, okay. So let's ha read this card again. Greater power or toughness. So when does the enter the battlefield trigger happen? This is a good question. We'll uh, we'll decide. We'll figure out. I think this isn't going to pump the adaptives because it's too small. It's already entered the battlefield, so I may as well pump one of the adaptives and swing with it. Okay. And um, we'll look for a forest. Uh, 
So yeah, what we've discovered there, there we go. I was expect, sort of expecting that. The uh, we discovered Simulacrum is not so good with evolving adaptive, so it might not be the right card. Okay. I could go ahead and chuck this out. So it might have been better to do to wait and we could have done tribute to the world tree this turn. Farewell. Does not hit planeswalkers. Uh, okay, I mean, I'm going to go for Tribute to the World Tree, actually. Make a creature, and I should draw a card. And I'm still threatening lethal. Another farewell, okay. So we've had a depopulate, two farewells so far. Right. Uh, Caretaker does have hexproof. I sort of don't want to play the cat, still don't want to play it. Um, Well, he's probably got counter spells. Let's go for the caretaker. Did we run him out of board sweepers? No, we didn't. He still had a fourth one. Uh, what good is Bushwhack? We can kill one of these guys, I suppose. Okay, that... That is an artifact creature. That said... Let's keep creating our creatures. Uh, I, I guess... No, maybe I don't feel too threatened by five mites. I don't have to kill one of them. They don't block anyway. And I can keep a card in hand, so he's suspicious. Okay. Block one, block one. And this takes three. No board sweeper. That's very interesting. Okay. Devious cover-up, so he counter spells, he gets three of his three board sweepers back in. Nasty. Okay, we will keep making creatures. And yeah, we, we just have to swing for eleven. We're one off. Let's see if he drew drew one of his, no he did not draw his board sweeper. Oh well that's that's not bad. If, mono, if a mono green deck can survive four board sweepers, that's a good sign. 
but yeah, because I got, I played my planeswalker, I suppose. That's, uh, that seems to be the crucial thing you need. Actually, so this is interesting because we've got a bushwhack in the opening hand, so we can um, find the second forest, and then we've got three two drops. I'm actually going to keep a one lander here. Looks like, oh, Roaring Earth. You do not see that card every day. So it's another way of growing your creatures with um, a landfall trigger, uh, as opposed to an enchantment trigger. So uh, that is very interesting. Now, we've missed our um, land drop. Uh, I guess actually the Scrap Gorger could give us more options. But uh, Beast Caller is more aggressive, so I'm going to go for the Beast Caller here. And we have to make a treasure token. Yeah. Right. So, I think we just go for Kadama and pump both of these guys up. We, um, yeah, the Galagrias cannot get through his 3-3, though. Oh, yeah, I'll go ahead and give them a plus one, plus one. Every little helps. I suppose with this you want the uh, the sacrifice lands that look for more lands. He probably, I imagine, he has those in the deck. So that's going to be a supersized Weaver of Harmony, and he's going to copy that trigger to get more more stuff. Right, so. To recap, we have four mana available. Uh, we could go Evolved Spinoderm. But the more creatures we play, the better. Uh, we want... Tell you what. I think... Yeah, Gala Greeters will not trigger the Evolving Adaptive. I think we start with the Gala Greeters. Uh, a few battlefield. Let me think. I'll uh, yeah, we'll grow that Galagrita, and then we want an evolving adaptive. Let's get some tapped treasure tokens. And we'll get him growing as well, and we can attack with a five-five.
So, yeah, very much a case of who can uh, grow faster. So arguably I missed a trick, because if I held back the adaptive, I could play it for free next turn, after I play Defiler, and pump everything. But I can always play Scrap Gorger for one, because I should have six mana next turn. We'll just see how much da if this guy wants to swing in and uh, do me damage. He doesn't have a life linker out at the moment. What does he have removal? Maybe no removal. Okay. So we'll go to Phyla. So let's pump up all the greeters and sort of think about whether they can attack or not. Play this for one. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, I like the look of this. Turn one play, a couple of turn twos. And we get might looks like we'll get to see tribute to the world tree as well. Not seen much action from this yet. So just to recap, Galgreeters will not trigger evolving adaptive. I think I'll go for the Beast Cooler. A bit more aggressive. But we've got the Domain deck, so this is going to have sweepers in it, I suspect. Ah, ossification. Cool, going for my one drop. We'll just play it slow and go for Tribute to the World Tree. Not very aggressive, but that's going to give me uh, a lot of card draw in the future, with, with any luck. So, Tribute goes away? No, no. Take out the creature. Okay, okay. Do I follow up with another Tribute? Or do I play a creature? Does he go, is he going to Leyline line Binding that as well? Yeah, he's going to lay line binding that as well. Fair enough. So he drew some, you know, that's that's pretty heavy duty single target removal that he's drawn there. I'd be surprised if he's drawn a third permanent removal thing. Yeah, there we go. Right, so let's uh, let's think about this. Let's start with the beast cooler. That's pretty aggressive. Uh, good chance he has a board sweeper. I would say.
I'm gonna, so I'm not gonna play two creatures this turn. Uh, I can, you see, he has the perfect answer, which is Archangel. Four damage to that. That's the other sort of single target removal that this deck seems to run. Uh, now we're not so scared of the board sweeper. The Gala Greeters, Simulacrum. Right, we'll make this guy bigger. Uh, big Gala Greeters. Yes, let's make a big Gala Greeters. Interesting, discarding that. Doesn't want his 5-3-3s. Uh, three okay, I think we'll go Doomscar Warrior here. Uh, yeah, let's, let's just keep pumping this guy up a bit. Uh, back up one. Let's spread the tokens out a little bit. Uh, let's go greedy. Yeah, we're setting ourselves up for a huge board sweeper here, but... Okay, let's have a treasure token. And attack. Okay, oh, Kadama. I like the sound of that. That'll trigger card draw from tribute to the world tree. So if he does, so that's something. If he does have the board sweeper, it's an attract. So okay. These are the revealed cards. Okay. No board sweeper. There's a, another big creature there. There's another archangel. So we kind of want to get ourselves, our creatures, up to 7-7 seven, seven or better, if we possibly can. To sort of trade off with a Traxxer. You can get to 8-8. Eight, eight. It's getting too life, actually. Just in case. Um, right, so unfortunately this gains 7 life. So he's not basically going to be on 27 life. He can take the most favourable block, which would be maybe the Beast Caller. And take 17 damage quite comfortably. Swing back, I take 10. But I can't block any of his guys, so... Well, oh, I've got a reach creature, I suppose. Uh, let's just go in with everything. Oh, yeah, he's got, uh, he's got Death Touch. That's one of the things. So he does kill my 8-8. This is going to thin out my deck nicely. Oh yeah, back up Kadama. That sounds brilliant. If he does have the board sweeper. I'll keep a forest in the hand. End the turn. Another okay, right, that's why. Tracks are number two.
big old handful of cards. He's found a third ley line binding, which gets the biggest creature. Yeah. Okay. Averbrook Caretaker. Let's see. He's got a Tali. Kaya's horrible. That will just um, destroy me. Um, but we have Averbrook Caretaker, so I'm going to play that. Uh, we'll keep growing these this, the greeters. Uh, we draw, of course, we draw a forest. <laughs> There's still plenty of forests in the deck, so it's not hugely surprising. He's going to be effectively on 21 life. If we attack with everything, we lose two creatures to do 8 damage, and he gains 10 life, so there's absolutely no point. So we will go... Oh yeah, we can grow something here. I'll go ahead and grow Kadama. We always have a replacement. If... Now what I could have done, I could have got this up to 7 power, so then at least it's trading off with a Traxxer. But I won't, so no attack. So we'll go we'll go defensive this turn, so we can, we can block an Archangel of Wrath and kill it. Now of course he's got, well, he's got lots of options here, because he's just played two Atraxes. So Priest Stomper, and he's got his own Kodama. Okay. Okay, Evolving Adaptive. Maybe we'll play a forest. No, let's hold. Let's hold back just to. It's a potential surprise. I think we grow. See, if I did nothing there, could have switched it to night time, couldn't I? I'm not used to playing with Averbrook Caretaker. Never mind. That's what we should, definitely should have done. Um, we're going to pump up the Simulacrum and attack, because then at least at least should trade off with something. Trade off with an attractor. All right. Uh. Yeah. Let's now. It does pump my creatures a bit if I do play that. Yeah, so we'll just replay it because I don't think it's going to, it's not going to do much. Oh, that's right. Okay, so I think we need two life points from that. And we want to grow something else. Maybe a Doomscar Warrior would be good. And end the turn. I think once he plays Kaya and starts just killing my creatures and and stealing them. Um, all right, no, he's just gonna he is gonna do the uh, the sweeper. He does have Sunfall. Fair enough. I was hoping he didn't have a sweeper, but of course he does.
he gets, of course, a 9-9 creature. So yeah, I mean, don't know why they printed this card. <laughs> uh, I guess they really hate mono green. Uh, that's a shame, look. We, yeah, we're two power short of actually killing this thing. If we block it. Well, we've got to stay back and block. that a trampler? Yeah, okay. So technically I can stay alive. Hey, we drew another Kodama. So we draw a card. Uh, we even get a Bushwhack. Um, we can't kill anything with it. I suppose this would be better if we had Death Touches. I think uh, the green black deck with um, the First Strike Death Touch. Glissa Sonslayer, that would, that, that would defi definitely go really well in that. Well, we definitely saw Tribute to the World Tree do some stuff in that game, but uh, I think the key with uh, this Domain deck, if he gets too early Leyline Bindings, he can play cheaply to slow me down. That just buys him so much time um, to get his really greedy spells out. Because uh, it was the third thing he did, had was the um, a full cost Archangel of Wrath to kill my 4-4 creature. And then, then he's just playing uh, Atraxas, and uh, it, he doesn't need to worry anymore. Right, so this is what we call a slow hand. We just have a, a three drop and a four drop. But I've got the bushwhack as an emergency thing to get me a, a third land. And I might be... I'll be safety first here. I'm going to bushwhack now to get that extra forest. Because there's a good chance I'll, drop, I'll top deck a two drop next turn. And uh, then I won't be able to do anything on turn three if I don't top deck a land. But yeah, enchantments again. 
very, very popular right now in the enchantments deck. And I will be make I will be my making my own version of enchantments. I've played it many times in the past, but uh, okay, I think. Right, what do we do here? I like, I don't like just playing a Kodama. I think we'll play the biggest creature we can. We'll play the Simulacrum as a four-three, and maybe be able to. We'll be able to trample through next turn if this, as long as his creatures don't get too big. Yeah, I'm gonna make. Uh, I'm gonna make a new, new version of enchantments. I'm gonna try and use. Some new cards in it, though. I don't think I have any copies of Calyx. Sheltering Bows isn't that fascinating. So, yeah. Card draw aura gives plus one, plus three. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, just let those through. That's ten damage. And the game's practically over. It's as bad as mono red sometimes in Charmant's deck. Uh, right, well, what I was going to do is play Kadama. I could play Doomscar Warrior. Let's play a Doomscar Warrior. Uh, yeah, under attack. Vorinclex, you say? Very interesting. Okay, so that's got Trample, it's doing 8 damage, uh, we lose the game. So that was, yeah, that was turn 5, wasn't it? No, not much fun there. <laughs> I was on the draw, I had a slow opening hand though. Uh, no. Um, yeah, Beast Call is more aggressive. Let's just start with Beast Callers. Okay, it might not be a domain deck, it might be a white deck. Splashing other colours.
Okay, I'm going to bushwhack for a land. Which might be a mistake, but he just guarantees I can do two things next turn. It's a planes deck. So I think greeters and greeters. Adaptive. Scrap Gorger. I mean, we're playing a bit into a board sweeper. I just feel like Mono Green has never had much choice other than to just try and race the opponent uh, before they draw their board sweeper. And there it is, okay. So I think we've seen Sunfall in about half the games so far. It's a pretty good reason to not bother with Mono Green right now, I think. I am just going to build up my board again, because that's all you can do, I, you know. And he's got a 5-5 blocker as well, so we can't even attack. dig for the next sunfall and then we can concede. As the next, the next one. Uh, we have drawn Nissa, so we established this is pretty good against control decks. Uh, this is going to come alive and kill Nissa next turn. 
Uh, so I think a good move here is just to destroy that now, as a precaution. Okay, well, she's going to cost seven. And we're going to play this out because we have a we have a, a game plan here, so. But it's going to, yeah. I think there's a good argument to just concede here and get into the next game. And I'm going to bushwhack for a forest so we can play Nissa next turn. Might get countered. This well, obviously they would counter the Nissa. That would make more sense. Okay, I think we just play the Nissa. If it gets countered, we can concede. Yeah. There we go. I mean, that's why... I was quite surprised earlier to actually beat a control deck. But then the, the earlier one didn't seem to have soul partition, or didn't draw it. Control decks need a, really need an answer to everything. If you're running fair well as, you, as a board sweeper, you need a, still need a way to kill the planeswalkers. Okay, every it looks like every other game is gonna be enchantments. He's got the early weaver, so if he finds ossification, he can take out both my creatures and then I'm probably too far behind and I can concede circle of confinement will do it so yeah we're, we're done with that one we're just too far behind in that situation so we can concede that. He is just going to run over me. And it's not like you can hold back your creatures. Then you, you still get run over.
Okay, we are a bit low on resources here. We didn't draw a third land yet. I'm going to start with Gala Greetus. So at least we can make a treasure next turn if uh, we don't draw a land. Okay, this looks like a domain deck. It's got four colours. Ah, never mind. Uh, actually, the best thing to do is bushwhack for a land. Play the beast cooler. Play Kodama. So he doesn't. Oh, he does have blue there. So he's got his five basic land types already. Let's see if we see some uh, ley line bindings. There's a light line binding. Okay. Right. He's in the sort of uh, sweeper range. I think Evolve Spinoderm is. Uh, you can only obviously only kill that with a sweeper. I'm going to go for the Doom Scar Warrior. Get a land and a card off of this. Right, do we want a la another land or a creature? I think I like the simulacrum. I'll go for the creature. Third migration for a land. So we're not getting swept to this turn. But he's on 16 life. We top deck a land, that's not bad actually. Uh, what can we do? Well, that's 8 damage. That can add 2 damage. We can do, get 10 damage. Uh, He's got Sunfall. He's got Sunfall, and I don't think we, I just we just can't worry about that. I probably should have played Quarry and Beast Caller first, but I maybe I hold back a few creatures for a change, just because we've been Sunfalled several games in a row. It feels like, well, not well. Every other game we get Sunfold. Nice. Bit of card advantage as well. Okay. You could have a second backup Kadama. Which is interesting. Or another Beast Caller. I think I'll go for a second backup Kadama. Because I'm expecting this lot to get swept. Okay. Another land. So you can do a maybe a farewell. Right. No sweeper, interesting. Once in a while it happens. They don't draw the sweeper. You get to win as mono green. I 
Okay, we've got our four wins. I'm satisfied with that. I, I think that was about... That's probably slight, even slightly better than I expected. I thought, yeah, Sunfall was going to be a problem. I thought we'd have seen some mono red in sort of best of one play, but it looks like uh, that's been dropped in favour of uh, enchantments. Probably, which is probably a bit more consistent, and, and is probably pretty good at uh, against mono red with the uh, life link guy. So this is the deck. I only put two scrap gorges in here. Uh, one thing I've realised: the scrap gorger has oil counters. It gets. Uh, we never actually exiled anything from a graveyard with this. Um, so this is better if you've got proliferate in your deck. For example, you might want. There's, a, there's quite a good two drop, uncommon two drop creature, Canker Bloom, here. One of the options on Canker Bloom, you can sacrifice it to proliferate. This might be a very, very good sort of practical option in this, in this meta game when there's so much. Uh, so many enchantments going on. Uh, there's also that werewolf, which is pretty awesome. Outland Liberator. So when it goes to night time, this thing just gets to kill artifacts and enchantments whenever it attacks. Uh, in daytime, it's basically doing the same thing as the Canker Bloom. So you can kind of you kind of go for a mono green meta meta game deck that that just punishes uh, enchantments. But uh, I've gone from the thematic kind of uh, modified modified green deck with Kodama. Everything's having, yeah, everything's got uh, plus one, plus ones. There are some things that don't really work with evolving adaptive, like Gala Greetus. So maybe you you pick one or the other. Maybe you, you don't bother with Gala Greetus if you're going for evolving adaptive. Uh, you want something with power or toughness that's at least two. And uh, yes, Simeon Simulacrum's base stats are just two one, so it's that one's for a three drop. That's not so good with evolving adaptive as well. And we saw a bit of tribute to the world tree, that you know has potential, but the mono green late game, it's not really going to compare to the five color domain late game. And uh, yeah, Vorinclex just seems. I've just added this guy because he seems pretty cool. He help, gets me. He lets me draw two forest cards, so that can help me get to you know seven forests for Nissa. Uh, he doesn't have uh, any plus one plus one tokens, uh, at, at any sort, at any kind of synergy. So he, so you could, this this guy could get dropped from the deck honestly, but um, I did want to try him out. Everything else is doing plus one, plus one tokens or oil tokens. So yeah, I, I first yeah, I haven't played really with Averbrook Caretaker. So yeah, the crucial thing with the werewolves, you just got to remember, is it really worth playing a card, a non un, <laughs> something unimpactful, or would you rather flip the uh, Caretaker and pump your entire team by by plus two, plus two? So, yeah, so that's. Anyway, that's that's my uh, one of my takeaways from that. Anyway, I think uh, that is a video. Uh, thanks for watching.